Hey traders, Parker here with a trade I took. Um, if you watched my last video, then you saw this indicator right here. This uh, price and volume average trend with ATR. I have it set at 12. 12 uh, bars on a five minute chart gives you an hour. <clears throat> so this is where the best spot to get in right here. You can see what price broke above. Um, the average and VWAP came back down and tested it. One of the other reasons for getting in right there, you can see with the signals indicator that the stock is hourly actually uh, throttling. Especially when you see these blue squares right here, the stock is trying to push down further, but it's uh, running to resistance or it's running to buyers. Yeah, they won the battle right here, but look what happened down here. You get all these blue squares, which just represents uh, churning. Or throttling you're getting a lot of volume but not a lot of movement within the closes on the bodies of the candle on the candles and you can see right here this is just a low volume candle right here while you getting these explosive moves right here with this high volume right here a volume above one deviation and then you got your um, divergence uh, dot right here or a price divergence dot and then you getting these closes breaking above these highs and you have this uh, red candle with little or no volume. Even, you know, it's trying to break above. You're getting these wicks right here. So there are sellers defending this area. But buyers finally won out. And you can see what I'm kind of referring to. It looks like a diamond. But it's showing you that close broke above this high with a higher volume than the previous candle. And this arrow that you can't really see is a VSA between the closes is uh, above one deviation. <clears throat> so it broke above the average and the um, VWAP with authority. And the other thing, it's once it hit two deviations on VWAP, that's what this uh, light green line or this uh, cloud is showing you. The bottom of this uh, cloud is three three deviations from a uh, VWAP, this is two deviation, this is one deviation on this gray line. So it really came back into this area and pushed above. It hit one deviation above VWAP, came back down. You can see where it throttled, trying to push above or churned, where it tried to push above, but it couldn't. It came back down. This triangle shows you that this weak volume uh, pushing it back down. You got this almost like a doji or a, almost a hammer candle hidden VWAP and you can see it's a red candle but it's cloaked in green and that's where the push came up the back um the bullish bear is called the back test retest and basically it's back testing the VWAP and it got this push above also you can see where these yellow dots come in so there's a very volatile and it's after the first hour this stock is SQQ it just represents the Q's uh, tech uh, technology short so if technology or QQQ is going down, then this would go up. And that's why I've been playing, especially since technology is seeing some weakness or is pulling back for a short period of time. So saw this, got in, uh, and wrote it up. And you can see how once it broke back above, even though it broke back above on weak volume, you got this... Uh, this um, wedge, this wedge right here, showing you that, hey, it broke above this previous high with higher volume. So that's a good sign. And basically, it ran back into two deviations above, <coughs> excuse, above VWAP, came back down, retested this one deviation, pushed back above into the two deviations, and basically rode it from there, or it came back down and retested it again. But you can see right here, this dark blue is showing you the prices on average is moving up, but volume is not increasing. But then you get this cyan or this bright blue color right here showing you, hey, price and volume moving up and this volatile period and this vol uh, vol ATR is moving up as well. And that's what those yellow dots represents is volatility. You can see this was a tweezer top right here. You got to, uh, but this is all low volume. You can look at this. It's all low volume. And then you got this push back above. So buyers are just sitting in there and these are just these, uh, you can almost say it's flagging from here. 
But for the most part, I would have to go to a higher time frame to really see the flagpole. And you can see right here, you got volume above two deviations. This is not this. It's a good sign, but it could be a bad sign as well, because it could have been a blow off top right here. And you can see right here where uh, price is throttled at this top here with these blue squares right here showing that volume is churning. There's a big volume here above average volume here, but the stock is not able to push above. And then you got this triangle right here showing you that, hey, this move right here is weak or it's a release. I caught it in, in an exhaustion. And, um, but for the most part, um, price was able to hold this or hold or sustain this area for a little while longer until it broke down right here. You got another tweezer top right here. And price finally broke down. And... And that's pretty much it for the trade. Once price broke down, <clears throat> and especially you started getting these uh, these upper wedges right here, showing you that, hey, uh, close broke below the low with increasing volume. You got a, a retest right here, but price really still didn't really go anywhere. And usually I look for increasing volume in the other direction. <clears throat> to the downside and that's what you got right here for another entry but for the most part you got this churning right here for a back test retest you got this push down below on increase in volume yellow represents volume at two de deviations and you got this churning so this is no really no direction until you get here especially with these wedges this would be a good sign to get in or stop just because the closes are breaking above the high on increase in volume. Back test retest right here. And close broke above the previous high. And uh, VSA is above uh, one deviation. So this would be a nice entry right here. Breaking above this high. And then breaking above the high here as well. And it continue on, but you got ran into issues right here on this candle right here. You can see this volume is above two deviations. Yes, there's the green wedge down here showing that uh, the close broke above the high on increasing volume, but <clears throat> the close of this candle is below half of the uh, candle, uh, but below half of the range between the high and the low. And that's why you got a red uh, uh, candle here represents VSA above one deviation, but it's to the downside. And then it's not necessarily a sign to get out, but it's showing that, hey, there's trouble brewing or there's a buying imbalance. I mean, yeah, well, selling imbalance, actually. Well, I, that's how that's why it's cloaked in red. And then you got churning after that with price not really knowing what direction to go. Yes, it closes above the previous close, but look at this. It's just, uh, I mean, it's a blue square right there, and, and you really have to wait to see where everything is going. And you got a broke above buyer, so we're able to take it up higher. But that's just something I wanted to show you on this uh, indicator. And like I said, this VWAP, I know I, I've made it free before, but if I... Um, I don't remember what video I uh, put it in. So just look in the link in the description. You can get this VWAP uh, indicator. Don't take this in any uh, trading advice or anything. This is just some, an observation that I wanted to show you that I made uh, in my trading and especially help me uh, take me further. I'm not a financial advisor, so this is not uh, me telling you to take any type of trade. But with technology going down or possibly taking a pause and a pullback, SQQ was the one that uh, I chose to, uh, uh, you know, to try and play. And we look at it on a weekly, uh, SQQ is pretty beat down. This is, uh, this is my inside day, uh, inside uh, bar indicator. And it's showing you that SQQ is bro uh, <clears throat> broken all the way down to this level. And it's trade within this bar. So SQQ uh, possibly, you know, it could make it back above this. I mean, make it to this high of this bar right here. Or this inside bar. It could push above. <clears throat> The other one, the it's opposite is TQQ. 
and we can go see where TQQ is. Same situation. It's the exact opposite from uh, what SQQ was in. You can see right here, it's inside the inside bar as well. Same. <laughs> Basically, everything is the same. <laughs> and you can see it's breaking down below, but look at the volume. It's way low volume. And you're getting these triangles here as well. And that's why I talked about exhaustion range. So this move down is happening on very low volume compared to the past couple of bars. So I would uh, look for a bounce. If not, uh, probably a bounce in this once it hits the bottom of this uh, inside bar uh, right here, possibly. There's no guarantees, but we'll see what happens. And these pink lines I drew are actually uh, are actually gaps. I believe it's a gap on a daily, but it shouldn't be valid anymore because it's broke above it. Yeah, there we go. There's the re uh, back test retest on the gap as well, <laughs> and that gap was coming from back here. There we go. And this just shows piercing cloud cover, uh, PCL. <coughs> so this was his 100% uh, on the fib, on the Fibonacci level. So yeah, from the bottom of this range to the top of this move. And here we are. And you can see this low volume <coughs> or exhaustion range. And this is TQQ yesterday. Should be like the exact opposite of SQQ. Yeah, there you go. Your break above. Here's your uh, squares right there. Showing you that, hey, there's churning or uh, and cooling like to call those anomalies where volume is high, but the ranges are small, showing you that hey, uh, it's, there's sellers in this area trying to push it back. There are defenders in this area, and the stock isn't able to push above it, and it actually collapsed down low. And QQQ should look the same. Basically the same. QQQ looks basically the same. Yeah, you got this big push in the morning, but then it pushed down below. And we go back to SQQ. And you can see how there are mirror differences between those two. And I wanted to go to the hourly. <clears throat> There's this break right here. This is just showing the inside bar. So QQQ is still trading within this hourly bar right here. So it may come down to 2046. This is just inside bar on the hourly. This early in the morning before the <coughs> stock actually, uh, market actually opens up. And you see how uh, SQQ is losing ground now. And here's your pre-market high, pre-market low, and the midpoint for your pre-market. And with VWAP, sometimes, I guess I'm rambling at this point, but I like to switch it to the weekly just to get a better idea of where everything is. So this actually weekly VWAP is down here. Uh, one deviation is down here. I mean up here. Previous week's high, previous day high, previous day close, after hours high, after hours low, so it'll be around here. But this is the end of the video. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, after hours low. Appreciate you guys taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. I wish you the best and God bless. And just look in the link in the description. You can get that VWAP. And uh, uh, if I haven't, uh, if you haven't already, uh, the price volume trend with ATR as well but God bless you guys and uh
just check out what I'm telling you. Uh, and I'll see if it works for you. But uh, this has just been my strategy. If it doesn't work for you, hey, it's a lot of different other strategies out there. But God bless you. And thank you again for listening to what I had to say.